about that. I like it over there. I was asking, I said, God, show me a wall in scripture. Because I, I did it. I went to the Hebrew and I found Gator. But I wanted something that I could walk that's tangible. So he gave me something that's tangible. Go to Psalms 139. Then we're going to look at the word Hebrew in Hebrew. I kind of giving you the finish at the beginning, but I, I just sometimes you get a message you just want to give the good stuff up top. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I'm guilty of that right now. I didn't want this to be on the, on the tail end. I want to be able to finish this one. Uh, Psalms 139, verse one. It's ten verses. We're going to read it. I'm gonna be real fast. Go ahead, verse one. Oh Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou hast what? Search me and known me. Can you hear this? Can you hear that wall coming up? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Come on, go verse now two. I know it's my down sitting and my uprising. You know you who? Down, down sitting and your uprising. He know when you're weak and he know when you're strong. Huh? Am I right? You're down sitting and you're uprising. He know when you're weak and when you're strong. Uh huh? Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou understandest my who? Thoughts afar off. In other words, he understands things before they come. Amen. Now, I some things that he got for us, because he searched us internally. And this speaks of your prophetic destiny. He said, you know my thoughts are far off? It's pointing to your prophetic destiny. Go ahead, go ahead. Thou compassest my path and my lying down. And are acquainted with all my ways. He put a, a compass around my path and my lying down. He, my path, my journey, my going, and even when I come home to get refreshed, he compassed me about. I know somebody got to clap on that. He said, oh, oh yes, yes. He says, because you are acquainted with all my ways. See, can't you hear that, that wall coming up? See, you got to take the guy, I'm thinking you're acquainted with all my ways. Yeah. You know what's in me, you search me, you know my thoughts are far off. Yeah. Man, that wall, I don't know about you, but that wall, way down here, that wall, I can see it coming up now. There's a wall coming up. There's a wall coming up, man. <laughs> Go ahead. For there is not a word in, in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. He know what you're getting ready to say. <laughs> yeah. That word is not a regular word, but the bar word. It's a destiny word. It's a word that can create stuff. He said, you know it all to get. I don't know about you. And it really means that there won't be anything missing in that word that's in you. It's all together. I don't know about you, but I want a word all together. I don't want to hit and miss. But when you can understand that he's encompassed you around, if you're lying down, or even your path, you're down city, or you're uprising. That's that wall. So now, I even know the very dictates of your heart. That's on your tongue. It's right here now. That wall is right here now. It's getting bigger. Go ahead. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Hold, hold on a second. He be sent me where? Back here. And the head. And his hand rest on me now. What was the first one? He be, what, what? Behind. Took care of my past. My future. And even now, his hand is on me. Oh, boy. So that wall right here now. It's right here now. You get what I'm saying? That's his, his hand. His hand. His fivefold ministry gift. Yeah. 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 Why, is, why the church is not have no functionality? Because we haven't understood the power of his hand. Yes. Yes. That's right. We got pastors, evangelists, and teachers, but we don't have the apostle prophet. We need the fivefold ministry to be yes. on us. Yes. Oh God. Yeah. Verse six. <laughs> Such knowledge is too wonderful wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Mm -hmm. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Ah, he's everywhere. Dang it, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. If I ascend up into heaven, 
thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If you make a boo boo, he said, I'm there. If you do anything right, I'm still there. Oh. Wow. Say, if I sin into heaven or the high places, we're talking about some nebulous stuff up here. If, if you desire to go into some places in the spirit, if you desire to be, get to a position where you can hear from God and experience the presence of God, he said, I'm here. Yeah. He said, even if when you step outside of heaven and get beside yourself and then you find yourself and made your bail or made a covenant or you begin to walk in the room with hell, he said, what, what happened? I'm there too. There is nothing at all taken. Cause him not to compass us about. Now, I know I got to say this to, to certain people because they figure, well, see, I told you I can do what I want. That ain't what we said. Because his love constrains me. It's not a license. It's a license not to sin to me. It's a license to sin because his goodness leads to repentance. So if you never found out how good he is, you never repented. Can't take fire up in your bosom and not be burnt. Tell me, well, all of a sudden, I got this grace. That grace is not a license to do what you want. Okay. Verse 9. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall, shall hold. <laughs> even what? Gonna hold me, but his hand's gonna lead me. His hand's gonna lead me, but his right hand, we know right hand speak to us of Jesus. Jesus is on the right hand of God. He said, My covenant with you, I'm gonna lead you. Come on now. That is connected to the wall. God wants us to get to the point where we understand that we can, without reservation, without conviction, can say in our heart, I trust God on that level. None of us is there, but we want to get there. Yeah. Because Proverbs 10, 18 to 10 said that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. That's the wall. Yeah. All those blessings that we just spoke over in those 10 verses, we still find ourselves doing what Ecclesiastes says. Go to Ecclesiastes real quick. Verse 10 and 8. Y'all there? Go ahead. Please ask this. Yeah, he that diggeth the pit shall fall into it. He that what? Diggeth the pit shall fall into it. You know, when he basically said, he said, whosoever, and I, I said, God, what do you mean? Who, who dig a pit? They fall into it. He said, sometimes people destroy their foundation. So the same place that was a blessing with a foundation became a pit. Mm -hmm. Guys, girls, listen, please, let hear my heart. You cannot violate scriptures. I'm here to tell you, there are some foundational stuff that you can't play with. You can't dig at. You can't go in there and say, I want to see how far I can go. They look good. They smell good. They got a nice car. They got a nice house, but I'm going to dig a pit in the, my foundation. Instead of saying, you say, good and say, speaking in tongues, go to church on a regular basis, know your own pastor, didn't pick it up, up on Google. <laughs> not cyber church, that's cyberspace. I'm not talking about that. Because that's digging, that's digging a hole. In the foundation. We don't want to dig a hole in the foundation. 